Hey guys, we are here again at Rock Pit Brewing. This is our second Gator Top Tier TC Meetup in Sub 2. You guys, if you're watching this, guess what? You're probably not here. And I want to see you guys here at the next one. We meet every last Wednesday of every single month. We're bringing three communities together. We want to make sure that we are bringing as much value to you guys. So if you're watching this video, most likely you're not here. So I want to see you guys at the next one. Remember, come to the last, uh, the, the, the last Wednesday every month, we're going to have the exact same meetup. And guess what? If you haven't already, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Real Javier Paredes. At this meetup today, we had pad split uh, account executives here talking about pad split. So if you come to the next meetup, we have another guest speaker. So we're doing different guest speakers at each meetup. Make sure you tune in, guys. I'll see you in the next one. I was smart because I was an agent. I used to get paid to buy deals. And when I was buying deals, rates were like 2 3% for a primary. Right. So I would get the commission. I would negotiate the seller to get my closing costs, and I get a 2 3%. And I buy them as a primary residence. Yeah. And I was doing that for three, four years. That, and that was in the Orlando area? Yeah. That's how I first scaled my portfolio was using banks. I think I told you about yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. My first deal was a, uh, a duplex, and I converted it into a triplex. That's awesome. So it had a carport on one side. Actually, both sides had a carport. It was a two bedroom, one bath, two bedroom, one bath. They both had carports. And then I convert, I fully permitted and I converted one of the carports into a flex space. Nice. So that cost me 40, 50 grand, but I get $1,500 a month on it. Yeah. And I, you know, forced appreciation 50, 60K. Yeah. About a year later after that, I did a cash out refinance. Yeah. I pull all my money out of that deal, you know? And it was 2018. I believe. Okay. Yeah, 2018. And then I bought another duplex after and I just kept doing the yeah. same thing. Yeah. And so money was so cheap when I did these cash out refinances. I have investment loans that I have cash out refinances at three and a half percent. That's amazing. Yeah. You know? You can't do that in that environment right now. Yeah. You know? So it's a lot harder to do something like that yeah. right now. You know? Yeah, no, no. Now I, I take everything. I don't even want. It's a completely different environment. Yeah. But it's, you know. I take down everything creative now. It's, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, doing anything uncreative. So you're not doing any, uh, any cash stuff right now? You're not doing no. any, you're, no. you're just doing no. buying no. creative deals? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent buying creative deals. My main focus, my main exit strategy is pad split right now. Yeah. So I have eight units going up. I have six here in, um, Orlando. I have another eight that I'm about to launch in Jacksonville. And these are eight single family? No, no, no. So, so rooms. we do them by, per rooms. Right, so right, right. Okay. in the pad split world, we call them units, right? So yeah, we'll have sure. one roof with eight units in it, right? Isn't that incredible? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, so. so I actually wanted to ask you about that because I have a deal right now in Sun City Center. And I'm talking to this, it's actually really funny. So the house that I'm living in now, I bought it sub two. I know, you told me. And the builder, it was the, it's just a cookie cutter house, mm -hmm. right? But the, it's a four bed, two bath, and it's 1935 square feet. And then I'm calling this seller to expired listing. Yep. Five minutes down the road from me, the exact same layout, exact same builder, everything. And he moved out of the house after trying to sell the place, but now he's doing, he's renting by the room. Yep. So he, it's the same layout as my house. Yep. So I'm talking to him about it. And, and he, so the market rent for, if you just had a regular family move in, would be like 2,400, right? He's renting that place total 4,000 a month. Yeah. So he's doing three bedrooms, the three little bedrooms for 750 each, mm -hmm. master for 1,100. And then the garage space he's doing for 750 as well, and that comes out to roughly 4K a month. Nice, um, but it's an HOA, right? There's an $8 yeah, month HOA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get street parking I, in that neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I so, tell people like Dom, he's got a 10 bedroom in an HOA. That's wild. Dude. Yeah, that's wild. Exactly. So I'm like, dude, you're really pushing the limit, right? Uh -huh. I always tell people if you're gonna do passive, actually, you you yeah, you brought me a deal yeah. last week or last month. He, was, he brought me a deal and he's like, look, man, what do you think about it? I say, dude, don't do HOAs, you know, at all costs. But again, it depends. If you haven't, you know, I always tell people, if you're taking down a deal, try to have at least two exit strategies. So that, I mean, that's what I wanted to talk to you about because, you know, people call it, so pad split is something where, you know, learning more about, right? You can yeah. take these communal rooms and you chop it up at a, right. like a wall. Or, right. But this guy, he, you know, he didn't do any of that and he called it co-living. Is that, have you heard people? Co-living and pad split is the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the right? same thing. Pad, pad split is just a, uh, a platform okay. that has now been created for co-living. So if you want to find co-living space as a consumer, you can go to PadSplit and sign up. What they've done is now they said, okay, well, we have a platform that we can house all these rooms on and bring all these consumers yeah. to this platform to rent these uh, uh, rooms that are affordable. And so that's what they're doing. Now, that, now that's how they're monetizing. Got it. 
because they'll go to investors like you, him, me, and they'll say, hey, look, you have the, you have the property, we'll curate the member for your property, do the marketing, do the brack on track, credit check, plummet verification for a fee. And do they do the management as well? Like no, they, the so they have 24 hour support, 24 hour, seven days a week, 365 day a year support. So like if the pad split member was to call up pad split and say, hey, look, I can't get into the property. There's actually internal notes that us investors can leave in the profile mm -hmm. and they can, they can say, okay, the code's one, two, three, four. They'll assist, but they don't manage. Okay, yeah. got it. So what do you, and, and I'm asking because right now I'm in the negotiation phase as a seller and you know, I've been looking at you know, my house through the lens like a year from now I'll move out and I'll just rent it out to a family. That's mm -hmm. the lens that I've been looking at this yes. whole time. And this guy over here, five minutes down, the exact same house, mirror. mirror yeah, 4K house. a month. Yeah, 4K yeah. a month. And it's like. And you can get you know, more out of that because guess what? He hasn't converted the, the living, room living room or the dining room. Right. In the bedrooms. I just think it's interesting, um, but for him, I mean, he was just like, yeah, it's just you know, people in my network that I knew were looking for rooms. Yeah. You know, and so he didn't. I didn't mention pad split or anything like that. You know, I'm just having a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. But at the eight dollar a month HOA, he said that he has signed with them a thirty day lease with each individual. Yeah. Right. So not doing pad. He's not. He hasn't done the. Right. Split. I mean, he's doing the same thing, but just not using the pad split. Right. Platform. Right. Right. And so with the thirty day lease though, we're checking the box for the HOA. The mm -hmm. HOA allows street parking, like right. the parking isn't an They're issue. They're not strict, so, yeah. Yeah, so, and, it, and I have the same HOA. And mm -hmm. so it kind of makes me think like, you know, why not roll the dice? Look, on this is what I would say. Go the pad split route. Yeah. If you have a sex, uh, second exit strategy, which you should always have, yeah. Yeah. and it doesn't work out, then there you go, you have a second exit. Right, right. And then what I also say is, being that there's four bedrooms and it's income producing already, and you don't want to bring too much attention, maybe not do that conversion and just keep it as is. But on my house, you know, when I move out a year from now, I'm going, you know, mm -hmm. um, putting that wall up in the living room, putting that yeah. wall up and then making it a six bedroom. Yep. You know, yep. or yep. seven, whatever. Yep. Yeah, and it spreads your risk so much wider as an investor. Like, think about renting one, two, three Main Street to one family. Yeah, exactly. You don't know if you're going to get paid for 30 days. Well, with Pad Split, you're getting paid either weekly, depending on how, what the member chooses. If the member chooses he wants to pay you weekly, or pads but weekly because they collect all the payments mm -hmm. or they can choose bi-weekly. But you're getting income coming in, right? right. Like yeah. pads but keeps all the money until the end of the month and they distribute, but your your risk is spread so much wider. Yeah, because you have- Because you're not just renting to one through, uh, one, two, three Main Street to one family. Yeah. So as an investor, you're getting, you're spreading your risk way wh wider. You're getting a higher return. And as any sub two deal that you come across, they're hard to find that they're cash flowing on the long-term side, yeah. right? So it's the next best exit strategy. And it's not for everybody, but you know, I tell people, you know, try it out, see how you like it. I mean, for this area, I mean, it's better than the midterm rental route yep. or the short-term rental route. Yeah, I mean, short-term rentals, bro, they're getting very, very strict. Yeah. And if you don't have a unique product, you're not gonna survive. Like the one that I just launched in North Carolina, yep. I spent 60 or 80K in amenities. Like we got a jacuzzi, we have a sauna, we have an ice bath, yep. it's decked out. And then yep. when you go out to the backyard, it's mountain views. So that's what sells people. It's like the, whoa, like, right. wow, this is awesome. If you don't have that, you're not gonna survive. Right. I get, well, I'm getting anywhere between 380 to $1,000 a night on that property. Yeah, yeah. But that's a unique property. Yeah. So if you don't have the uniqueness, you're not in the merging market. Remember how you sent me that one in uh, Tallahassee? Yeah. It's nothing unique about it, right. you know? Right. Yeah. So like, what pe where people are doing right now, they're marketing properties as, oh, this is short-term rental, because they're trying to get somebody naive to buy it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Somebody like me who knows the market, the STR market, yeah, won't touch it. These are what you know, revenues are going for in this area for three beds and two yep. baths, but yep. they're not taking in the, the pool, the amenities, you know, yep. that yep. account. What's up? This is the Pat Split Queen right here. Yeah. Well, I noticed that a lot of people in Pat Split, I noticed like, and this is what I was telling you guys last time, I noticed like a lot of people are doing the Burr method, which is cool and all, but like you still have to deal with banks, you have to get qualifying, there's a whole process. Versus like, I can go out there and just take and buy a home with a loan against it, you know? Even more, even more. Like, I don't have to deal with the banks. I don't have to deal with, you know, doing the whole rehab process because typically these properties are already in good condition. I'm just putting up the walls. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, I noticed like no one's talking about it. I had a call with, um, what's the manager guy's name? Quentin. Quentin, yeah. And so I was kind of a little bit talking about creative finance. But like most people are not doing creative finance when it comes to No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a no brainer. I mean, I'm buying houses at 2.83%, you know? So I have another one I'm looking at in Jacksonville. I'm about to launch the other one in Jacksonville. I have another one I'm looking at at 2.8% or 2.7%. Yeah, I mean, those, those rates are like 
We'll never see them again. They're free money. You're not gonna see them. The PITI is 1600 a month on that. Yeah, so I don't, I'm not touching anything with banks. I got a really good team in Jacksonville, by the way. Furniture for, for reno, everything. Okay. Everything, like it's Mac Daddy, everything's done. And I even have these like templates built out. So like when we need to hand over a template to like saying, hey, can you build the furniture? And can you put it in this room this way? It's all there. This is what goes in this room. This is how this bed goes. Like it's, it's a whole template. I built out a whole entire template just for that. Okay. It's a Google Doc. That's awesome. And then like you have the layout. Yeah, easy to follow. And then you get like on the app, or you get on the uh, floor plan app, you walk around the property, make a floor plan. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a few of them. But make a floor plan, that way you have a diagram and you can pass it on to somebody who wants to do something, you know? And then boom, you have all your stuff in there, you know? Like, hey, room one gets this. Room two gets this. Room three gets this. Here's the kitchen, this gets this. So, yeah, I just hand it over to people. And they, there's not really any questions that, that they have to ask me other than, you know, every blue moon they might ask a question, but yeah, exactly. It's, it's straightforward, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, unless they say, hey, something's missing, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, or hey, so yeah, something came broken or whatever, but it's it's pretty pretty streamlined. Uh, yeah, what's up, bro? What's, up, what's Orlando? your name? Orlando. Orlando, I'm Javier. Nice Are you Javier. sub two, Gator? T Gator. T Gator? Cool, Just bro. Nice. nice, you're from Orlando? Nice, man, thank you for coming, bro. Yeah, Appreciate you coming. Okay. I'm like, you feel overwhelmed? Overwhelmed. And I'm like, okay. this is going to take me a very long time. Then I got an email from Pay saying, hey, check out something Gator. And I went into that and I was like, this is something where I can probably generate a little income. Got it. So have you done any like transactional lending yet or no? Nothing at all. No. Got okay. So you want to do it off lines of credit. And so do you own any real estate at all or is this just, your, just your house? My primary residence. Okay. But you d eventually want, so you're going to start lending, make transactional income there and then focus on acquiring real estate cool that's man cool 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 yeah that's all i focus on is buying homes man yeah. so many so many good leverage points that you get off of it and tax benefits and cash flow and yeah. i mean just the list goes on and on and on i thought when i signed up for sub two i was like okay i can do this but then when i started all those courses i'm like oh my god i thought i was in over my head and i reached out to, to someone they're like nah everyone that's new feels that way and I'm like, yeah okay. this is what i tell people i say Pick one or two things that you think would resonate with you and focus on it. Yes. Give it three to six months, try it out. If it doesn't work, try something else out. What happens is people get in, they see all these shiny objects, they try every single one of them or try to try try every single one of them. They don't succeed at any of them and then they give up. Right. Okay. Because really any, any business that you start, real estate, uh, a donut shop, cookie shop, a, a brewery, you need some type of KPIs on how your production is, how, how your business is performing. What do your P and Ls look like? You know, like th this is important, right? To see if it's worth your time, or not even that, to see if you even like to do the, that type of business. Like I can say, hey, you know, go out there and wholesale, but you might say, hey, you know what? I don't like talking to people. I don't like, you know, being on the phones. You know, so then it might not be a good strategy for you. You might say, okay, you know what? I feel like I'm more strong suited in paperwork. You can might be a TC, right? You might run a TC company, or hey, you know what? I'm strong suited in paperwork. I don't like doing paperwork. I'm strong suited in paperwork. I'm gonna build a TC team. Bro, there's people who scale like that and they make tons of money, you know? Pick one or two things, try it out, three to six months, give it some time, let it, let it, you know, flow for a little while and see if it's something that, you know, you like doing. That's, that's my, you know, that's my advice. But yeah, buy and hold is definitely um, the way to go for sure. Can we brighten the lights up at any? Got some lights. That way we can see each other now. Me, you guys, you guys visiting or what? We're finishing up a flip. Nice, where at? Where, what zip code? 32822. Oh, okay, that's off Conway. Okay. Conway, Conway Gardens. Okay, yeah. I, 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 nice. I Are you guys doing the work yourselves or what? No, 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 no. How'd you guys acquire it? Tell me about it, I wanna hear the messiness. Okay, okay. So this was a, a single family and it had a trailer next to it? Okay, oh, okay. So they became your tenant on one of your other properties. Oh, you bought the, the trailer, rehabbed it, hey, move in. Okay. On the house. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Where did you buy the trailer at? What, what, okay. So we helped him move. Now we're rehabbing the house. So Good. We're nice. Dude, you guys know that I have some pad split uh, account executives, national executives here, right? So yeah, they just got here. So they're going to be speaking tonight as well. For a homeowner insurance? Right. So 10K. So let me ask you this. Are, are the roof, AC, plumbing, electrical, is that all updated? I think so. I think so. It's, it's all decent. Nothing. Okay. 10K doesn't sound right. I'll send you a guy um, who I do my insurance through, through my pad splits. He's a uh, insurance broker and he'll shop around with you. He's got access to like probably like 20, 30 
on the because you have the the main market and then you have secondary market. The only time they usually go with the secondary market is if you have problems with your roof, AC, or plumbing. So typically they want like right now in Florida, as you know, they want to see you know the roof. You know it can't be 20 years old, right? It needs to have. So you're gonna see a lot of like Southern Oak citizens, uh, security first. Right, right. Is it an HOA? No, okay, good. Can you only make it a six bed? We're debating on adding a seventh, but it would a shared bathroom. Yeah, it'd be four, four bedrooms to one bath. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That, yeah, that's a big question. That was the one thing I was like, eh, that's a little bit nope, much. Nope, but, uh, nope, nope. I got one um, that I run. It's uh, four bedrooms, one bath. It runs perfectly. So go. go so and th so the pathway requirement is you need one bathroom for every four, for every four bedrooms. And so what I say is if it has a sh if it's a shower, even better because people don't want to hang out in the bathtub, right? Uh, but I have no problems, no one argues over the bathroom. In the perfect world, that's what we all want, obviously. But yeah, I would add that extra, that bedroom. Because remember, after patent split, when they take their fees, you want to have as many bedrooms in that house as possible. Now, don't get me wrong, you don't want to make it a 20 bedroom. There has to be, yes. So basically what I do is I walk a floor plan, and let's say like the one I'm doing right now to give you a real, real life scenario. It's a three bedroom, two bath. It's 1,600 square foot. I converted it into an eight bedroom, two bath in Jacksonville. An eight bedroom, two bath? Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we definitely have the room. Now. Yeah. We have four. Yeah. We have four bathrooms. Yeah. So what I would say is you have that many bathrooms. Here's where you can also capitalize. If you can make some en suites to where people have their own either A entrance and bathroom, you can get more money per week on that. Being that you have the ratio of high number of bathrooms, you might want to make some, some suites to where people have their own bedroom and their own bathroom. Because you can charge, bro, you can charge another, you know, 50 to $75 depending on, you know, your location and all that stuff, you know? So I would add a, that extra en suite to where they have their own suite and let not the other, everybody shares the kitchen. Okay. okay. So, so for every, kitchen, so if you have, for, for, if you have eight members in one room, uh, house, cause that's what they call them, you have to have two refrigerators. Everybody shares a kitchen, but there are areas that where you make your money on or converting that living room, converting that uh, dining room, removing all that furniture if there's anything there, because the reason why you want to convert it A is to get a higher ROI, your NOI is gonna be higher. But not only that, you don't want to have a living room because you don't want people congregating in your living room. Yeah. If you have a couch and a big screen TV, it's gonna want them to have Super Bowl parties over there. If you have a pool, people are gonna wanna invite people over. We have a pool, we're trying to figure out what to do with that right now. Now, right now, it hasn't been drained, it's, it hasn't been cleaned in three years. It's, yeah. Okay, so uh, you, you you want my good my honest opinion? I would just fill it up. if it, Because it doesn't need to be resurfaced. Does it need to be redone, the whole pool? Okay, okay. so if it's that nasty, it probably needs to be resurfaced. To resurface a pool, you're probably going to be $16,000 easily, right? That's a lot of money versus getting a bucket of dirt and just dumping it in there and, and calling the day. Because remember... Now think about this. Yeah, you can bury a pool. Absolutely, you can bury a pool. There's nothing wrong with that. There's, it's, it's an abandoned pool. That's what it'd be considered. There's abandoned septic tanks. There's abandoned pools. There's ba abandoned oil uh, 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 from older homes. People used to use oil back in the day. So you can, you can now. You're probably gonna think about this on the on another side. Like, hey, is this gonna mess up my evaluation of my property? Pools don't really give homes a whole bunch of value. You know, you can refinish the pool if you want, but again, you're talking 16k. You're gonna, you're gonna need a pool pump, you're gonna need resurfacing, and not only that, it's probably gonna take you right now in this area to get a good pool contractor, four to six months to get somebody out there to do all that work. It's very slow process, these guys are backed up. Dude, exactly. I would get a dump truck, fill it up with dirt, and dump it in there. That's exactly what I would do, and then have it just graded. Guess what, now what? You don't have to worry about pool maintenance, you don't have to worry about pool guy, you know, so again, those are operating expenses you have to worry about in the future. Yeah. So price out what you can get dirt for to fill that up and it get graded, versus what it takes to refinish this pool. It's gonna be like this. You yeah. Know? So that's what I would do if I was in your position. Okay. Yeah, because that's where we're at now. We've got the rehab basically done. We have six bed, four bath, but we have the living room wide open still, and then we have the whole backed second living room basically that we haven't touched. Yeah, so maybe it, remember, you only need 90 square foot per bedroom. So if you can, you need two points of egress, right? Like a window and a bedroom door. All right, there's a fire, people need to get out two different ways if there is. And then you have to have 90 square foot per bedroom. So if you can take that big area and make it into two bedrooms, then go that route. Because you have the bathroom count. What would you say like down here, that size house, depending on the age of four guests, right in the middle of insurance? If you, oh, for insurance? You sh if, if your roof is updated, if your plumbing's updated, if your electrical's updated, and your electrical, all that stuff is good, 
and you have a clean four-point inspection because what the insurance ca ca carriers care about is the four-point inspection. Not, don't send them the, inspe the whole entire inspection report, send them the four-point. But if that's clean and you don't have like polybutylene plumbing, you don't have a roof that's 25 years old, yeah. you don't have all these issues with your property like aluminum wiring, they hate to see that type of stuff. <laughs> polybutylene plumbing, aluminum wiring, 20-year-old roofs, these things will get you high insurance premiums, if any at all. Because what happens is when you have these, only secondary market wants to insure you. So if these things are all updated, being that it's an older home, then you should be about three to 3,500 a year. What I would say is just, just shop around. There's got, why are you getting high, high quotes? Call the broker up or the agent up and say, hey, is my four point, is this what's causing this to go up? Are you in a flood zone? You need to do a little bit digging, you know? Is it the because, are in like MTR, STR? I don't do MTR, I do, I, I'm specialized in STR and co-living, which is with Pat's. So what do you say, are you saying the difference between insurance? Whenever insurance is looking at the situation, do they? Oh, there is a lot of variables. The way they're quoting you is a lot of variables. One are the major components, like I just mentioned. Yeah. If those aren't updated, it's gonna really drive up your premium. Your area, are you in a flood zone? I mean, these are, there's lots of different variables those underwriters are looking at to give you an actual binding policy. Because a lot of times what happens is you'll get an insurance quote and they'll send their own inspector out there 20, 30 days later and then you get a denial letter all of a sudden out of nowhere. You're like, what the hell, I got a denial letter? I already had insurance on this thing. Well, no, they give you a binding policy, they say it's binding and then they'll do their own insurance uh, inspection and if they see something and they'll bring it to your attention like, hey, trim the trees above your roof. I, dude, I get letters like that so many times. Trim the foliage behind, you know, away from the home. Now I have to go out and hire a tree guy for $15,000, $2,000, get the canopy away from the home to satisfy the insurance company so they can keep my, my quote in place. So I've had to do stuff like that. I've also had to do this. Here's another one I got recently. Oh, um, you have four steps in front of your home. You need to add rails. Dude, I had to go and buy rails. So th the insurance carriers are getting more and more strict right now. And the things that I look at when I'm purchasing and acquiring a piece of real estate is the major components are updated. Are the major points are updated? Am I in a flood zone? Those are my, my things that I'm looking at. Yeah. If I know my things are updated, like my roof is newer, I want to buy homes that are newer roofs or like no more than like I say five, max 10 years old roofs. I want PVC, PEX plumbing. I want a, a, a copper wiring, you know? And then I want my AC to be, I would say no more than five to 10 years old as well. If it's with all those, like I have a house right now, I'm negotiating, it's got, <laughs> check this out. It's got aluminum wiring, which is a big no-no. It's got PEX, or it's got uh, polybutylene plumbing. It's got, um, oh, the roof is old. It's 20 years old. I can fix all these things, but again, insurance carriers, if I were to go get a quote on it now, I'm gonna get charged a lot of money, you know, for the insurance. And all these things have to be updated anyways. So now I have to factor this into my, my entry fee. So there's there's a reason why that they're, you're getting charged so much. Check it out. Check it out. Why am I am I in flood zone? Is it my roof? Is it my plumbing? Is it my AC? Do I not have a clean four point? Did you get a wind mitigation? That'll also give you a credit on your on your insurance. What? And wind mitigation. A wind mitigation. Yes, basically. So wind mitigation. Okay. There's two reports that the insurance carriers care about. It's called the four point, which is your four points of the property, which is the hearts and lungs. What I tell people: your roof, plumbing, AC, electrical. Right. That's the four point inspection. Your wind mitigation is to see if you have roof ra the rafters, if you have the hurricane straps. So what they do is the inspector goes in there and they measure also the rafters and they see if you have hurricane straps. If you have that, the insurance companies will give you a credit on your insurance every year. So that report, the, the four point report costs you probably about $80 and the wind mitigation costs you about 80. So if you can spend 160 to save four or $500 a year, it's a no brainer. So, Get the wind mitigation report. Do you have a pitched roof or a flat roof? Okay, good. For flat roofs, you can't get a wind mitigation because the inspector has to physically crawl up there, take pictures, and do measurements for them to be able to, yeah, yeah. to give you the credit. That's cool. Yeah, I've never heard of that. That's, yeah. that's really Yeah. Cool. You just saved me a... Yeah. So how old's the roof? I think the roof, last I remember, they said it's like five years. I mean, it looks really good, and that's what I remember. Yeah, if it's five years old, then yeah, get that, get that, get that wind mitigation. Eight, eight, uh, it's copper wiring. Okay, well, what's your plumbing? If it's PEX or PVC, you're in good shape. You can also get insurance with copper plumbing as well, but typically insurance companies like to see PEX or PVC. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if you have copper plumbing, that's fine as well. But if you have polybutylene, copper or PEX, or if you I have, say... if you have galvanized, that's another. You know, they don't like to see that either. Stop using I mean, that was, that's uh, back in the 40s, 50s, yeah. 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 So it's 
gonna have either copper and then updated with PEX probably throughout the yeah, okay. Yeah, because where we're at now, the house is basically done. And so we have to fine tune these little variables to make it profitable. Got it. So it's not really a flip, it's a buy and hold. Okay. Were you guys direct a seller on it or are you working through an agent or a wholesaler? We got it from a wholesaler. Oh, it's you got a foreclosure lead. Yeah, pre foreclosure. How much did you have to catch up on the rears? It's like 50K? But there's like. I just, nice. I just bought one zero equity, uh, 30K in arrears. Yeah, 31,600 in the, was the reinstatement. So, one of the things I'm starting to do now, um, and I learned this from my TC, is instead of having the title company wire the money to the bank, we, on the reinstatement, they actually give wire instructions to catch up the reinstatement. We send the wire to the bank. It makes it look like there's no transaction, right? You always want to make sure it looks like there's not the property being sold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So what I would say is start sending the money directly to the bank. You can do it through a title company and they can send it for you. But if you want, no, you do it prior to close. So if you have your cash to close is $50,000 and let's say out of that $50,000, $25,000 to reinstate the mortgage, on the reinstatement, there's a there's a wiring instructions. You'd send it on that wire. Like if you have Chase or Bank of America, just do a wire directly to the lender. Did, did, did we wire it to the title company or did we do that? Probably to that title company. Because Giancarlo, the guy we work with, he used to work with yeah. the guy. Yeah. And then so he's kind of an expert. Yeah, I'm just, we're just doing it as a precaution. You can do it both ways, but. No, I like that. That's I, actually really Yeah. Cool. No, you, you want, no, no, there's no risk doing it for you close. I, the, I mean, you're. you're for some reason, the, the close didn't you, already wired. No, so I mean, my paper, so I have a contract with the seller, right? I could sign the documents, then send my cash close, if you're, if you're worried about that. If you, like you can sign all your documents, have the seller sign all the documents, and then send your cash close. So it depends, you know? But no, I mean, there's, no, there's I only no. ask because like right now, we're doing a wholesale where it's a lease purchase agreement, so they need, it has to be sent before close, and it has, it has to be sent directly to them, and it's like, to the to the seller, okay. so they can show their new lender, that, and it takes off the DTI. Yeah, I typically try to do everything through title companies. This is a scenario where I don't do it through title companies. Like, it's, everything's done. The title company say, hey, here's your cash to close, here's the Alta, but we'll take whatever the reinstatement is, and we'll wire that out ourselves. What's the interest rate on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you're, you'll be in the 8%. But you're learning, I mean, look, I mean, look, if it's, if it's one of your first deals, then, you know, it's all a learning process, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it might just be, you know, a, a, a break-even play, you know? But if you do pad split, it sounds like you, you'd be profitable. Pad split. We're already, we already have all the furniture. Are you guys going to be building furniture? All pad, pad split, what they're doing is they're curating the, the, the member for you, right? Meaning that they're getting the member to book your room. They're doing the advertisement, the background check, the credit check. They have the platform also that they have to keep up and running. There's a lot of engineering behind that, right, as well. They're also running all the ads on Facebook, YouTube, and whatever other platform. So they're doing all that those key things as well. Now, they also will provide 24-hour support if you don't pick up your phone. So let's say a member's trying to get a hold of you and say, hey, I can't get in the room. Well, they can reach out the pad split and say, hey, look, we've been trying to contact this host. They're not picking up. Do you by any chance know the code to room two? And you can have internal notes on the, on the uh, dashboard to where they can give the code to the guests. You see what I'm saying? But it's your job to manage the, the, the members in the pad split. Hey, um, Johnny's smoking in bedroom number four, right? That's your job to, 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 to handle that. Hey, uh, uh, Joey keeps taking a shit in the toilet and doesn't flush it, right? That, you know, I mean, these are real life, you know, you know, it happens. So, you know, you're going to hear things like that. But yeah, I mean, again, I mean, after you have people in place, there's really not a whole bunch of ongoing management you need, you know? You have solid, solid members. You get, you know, because obviously they're doing the screening on Pathway. You can do a, also a toggle on another feature where it's another layer of screening that you can do and take off instant booking. I personally have instant booking off to where I, I can vet that person as well. We can look at them, ask them questions, get a feel for them, see if we think they're gonna be a good fit for the home, and then go from there, you know? So. The normal amount of time that people stay in the rooms? Uh, based on pad split statistics, seven to nine months are the statistics. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So this isn't transient housing. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, because that was kind of the big thing that we've been worrying about. We don't want to turn into some property management company. Yeah. Like cleaning. Yeah, yeah. If you have good boots on the ground, like a good handyman, electrician, all that stuff, you'll be fine. Yeah. You know, somebody, like you're a cleaner. The, the, you know, the cleaner is the most important. They're the heartbeat of the operation. Because think about this. They're going to go in there either bi-weekly or on a monthly basis. They know that house better than anybody. 
they're going to constantly be in there at, at, in and out every week or, or every bi-weekly, however, however much you schedule them. Like on my eight bedrooms, I have them come twice a month. So I tell them, hey, do you smell any smoke? Hey, take pictures before and after. You know, be observant. Like they know, like, you know, they know like if something's going on. Hey, I haven't, you know, hey, Susie's in bedroom number three. I kind of smell some smoke smell, you know what I mean? So bring it to my attention. Make sure you're, you're, you say, hey, look, bring this to my attention. You know, setting them up, letting them know. And then so when people move out, do they typically, is it set up for passive that they're going to clean the place when they move out and get a deposit back? Or do we have to have the cleaner go in there? Yeah, no, you have to have the cleaner go in there. You have to have the cleaner go in there. And for me, I charge a move-in fee. Move-in fees can range from zero dollars upwards to a million dollars, right? Like, but it, I would also, I, I, I suggest going 97, but I've also lowered my, my moving fees to zero dollars, depending on the scenario. But I've had most people pay me $97 to move in because it shows they're more committed. Yeah. They don't want to lose a hundred. Remember, these people aren't making much money, so them to lose a hundred dollars a week or two later, that's a lot of money. So the, the hundred dollars the out? No, the hundred dollars goes to me. Okay. It goes to my income because I have to turn that room. Yeah. For me to turn that room, I have to hire him to go clean that room. But if you want to fill a house up really quick, you can always put no cleaning fee. Or no, excuse me, no moving fee. You know, to help boost the occupancy. Yeah, keep me posted, man. i like to see it. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious to see what you guys do, like, bedroom-wise, the configuration. It sounds like you still need to put up walls and stuff, though. In that neighborhood, that area that we're talking about. Great location. You think that area is Yeah, so what I'm looking at when I look for a pad split, I go on Google Maps. And on Google Maps, you can type in the address, and then you can hit transit, and it'll tell you how far you are from bus stops. So I'll say, you know, you have one, two, three street in there, and it'll say like, uh, two minute walk to this bus stop, three minute walk to this bus stop. It gives you every single location. So I know that 40% of pad split members don't have vehicles, right? So I wanna be able to have transit close by, like the bus system. So that's one thing I'm looking for. Basic job growth, basic jobs as well. Like for instance, um, people working at Lowe's, Amazon's, Walmart's. These people are the ones that are fueling your, 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 your homes. Like they're the ones that are gonna be booking with you. You know, so are you in the boonies where all the hay, haystack is? Like, cause you're not gonna get, you don't wanna do a home there. But if you're in an area like you are, you're centrally located, you have bus stops near you, right? You have a, a lot of job, a lot of walking, right? These are all important things, right? Does somebody have to have a four by four to get to your car or your house? Probably not a good home, right? Because you don't have bus stops, you don't have, you know, it's, it's not easy to commute stuff like that. So you have sidewalks, you have those electric scooters by, you have the bus system, you have the Uber, all that stuff. Uh, nah, man. For sure, bro. Follow me on YouTube, man. Um, I have a lot of content on there. Yeah, for sure. Get me on there. Uh, the real Javier Paredes, bro. Now that you have another tool in your tool belt, which is creative finance, you're going to be way more powerful now. Can you imagine taking... Pulling cash out? Yeah, yeah. To me, this is the way I say... This is the way I look at a paid off house, right? And everybody's in a different point in their life. The way I look at a paid off house is it's like having a million dollars in the Chase bank account. It's actually the money's depreciated. I can take that money out and spread it wide. Why have it in one bank account? You see what I'm saying? I want to spread it. Like, life is all about velocity of money. How can I take that $100 and spread it as wide as possible? How can I take that $1,000 and spread it wide as possible? It's funny because up until last year, I would have disagreed with you. Yeah. Completely. But now, but now I mean, it's like... Right. It's really like but, velocity of but, money. But remember this. Remember I said everybody's in a different point in their life. You're 40 years old. My point, I mean, my, uh, you still have a lot of risk you can take right now. Like go for it, right? You go to Vegas anyways. Like you're playing cards. Play it with real estate. Take some of those properties. Take that money and spread it wide, right? He's really smart. I right. Know. So when you do that, now you guys can start capitalizing. Let's say you took 10, 15, 20 of your homes and you say, hey, okay, you know what? We cash out. We got a, a couple hundred thousand or a couple million dollars to play with. Now you guys can say, okay, you know what? We're going to lend 10% of that money. We're going to continue to do transactional lending. We're going to buy deals with this portion of the money. This portion of the money is for the oh shit day. You know, like pyramid that, you know, pyramid it. Like, you know, take little chunks and diversify it. Spread it out wide. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, again, that's my opinion. I mean, everybody, like, I, like you said, I talk to some people and they're just like, oh, no, I'd rather keep this house paid off. Okay, cool. Right. But again, it's some people just don't know what they don't know. Right. And that's kind of where you were. Now you guys have the tool in your tool belt to where you're going to be a lot more effective. I tell it's like it's like a carpenter without a saw. Right. It's like you got the skill set. And now once you got that saw, dude, you're you're just moving through jobs, you know. 
So it's the same thing. You just didn't have the right tools in your tool belt and you had a very narrow way of thinking. Yeah, yeah. But now that you have it all, now that you have, you know, the tools in your tool belt, it's, you're gonna see, it's a, it's, a, it's a game changer, bro. Yeah, you know what you can even do on some of those cash out? You can sell or finance and become the bank on some of them. Yeah, yeah, we're talking. Bro, say, hey, look, I want XYZ down payment. I want to do this term. Dude, there's people who soak up those deals all day long, yeah. and you become the bank. And guess what? They default, you get it back. We don't want them to default, but yeah. I mean, No, of happens. course. It happens. And, and, like, worst case scenario is, like, not a bad thing, right. you know? Like, yep. I got my home back. Right. So that's, that's what I'm saying. So you could do lending. You can buy more deals. You could do some seller finances and become the bank on all these deals. Like, there's so many ways you can maneuver the your portfolio. You can sell the whole damn thing, get into commercial, I mean, whatever, you know? Yeah. I mean, dude, you have, you're in a good position, you know? So, yeah. yeah, I would continue to just keep fine tuning what you guys are doing. Try this pad spit out, see if you guys like the business model. And if you don't, then did five wraps last year. Good question, good question. Finding wrap buyer, penalty box buyers is what we call them. Mostly the best way that I found them are on Facebook. There's people who do bandit signs, Facebook groups, outreach to agents and lenders in that market. But me personally, I found the best ones on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of people will do those bandit signs. And so here's the thing with bandit signs and doing all these other marketing sources, you have to have somebody who's dedicated just to picking up the phones. So if you have the right systems and processes in place, wraps are great. So you can take a couple of those properties and do wraps to penalty box buyers. But you have to have the right systems and processes in place because it does become a job. And remember, at the end of the day, typically you deed that property to them. You can always do contract for deed, but typically you deed that property to them. So you're just getting cash flow at that point, yeah. right? You're not really building wealth. It's a cash flow plan. So that's why I tell people, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do wraps and you're a person who needs cash flow, you got time, you have energy, you have resources, you could, be, you could build systems and processes, then do it. But if you don't have all those things, then it could be very challenging. You can also, create notes and sell the notes as note investors. Bro, I mean, dude, there's so many things you can do and I don't want to overwhelm you, but just kind of like yeah. figure out, like look at a couple things, like you're already doing pad split, focus on that. Yeah, don't do yeah. too many damn things. Yeah, you can do that. That's, yeah, that's super creative. I mean, you know, you know, just live in there until you sell it, you know? It's not really scalable if you're looking to scale it, but yeah. Yeah, I did them and the biggest challenge I had was finding a super serious penalty box buyer. Like you get a million one investors hit you up, right? I always say don't sell a rap to an investor because they don't really give a shit. They're not really serious about the deal. You want to find the guy, Bob, who's a construction worker, who has, or who's a hard worker and has a family. Yeah. They're more emotionally attached to that property. If you get an investor, 11th hour, they won't fund on you. And you went through all this hassle. And then another thing I would say, I also add, make the person do, I would say $10,000 non-refundable escrow deposit. Like if they want to do an inspection, that's fine. After inspection period, your uh, your escrow becomes hard. Uh, no, not on any of mine. But it's good, it's good to do that because you don't want to become a predatory lender. Uh, because I knew I was only gonna do l less than five. I wasn't something I was looking to scale. If I was looking to scale it, 100%. And then I would take that R RMLO fee and pass it on to the buyer. So it's about three to four hundred dollars. I would pass it on to the buyer, but I didn't do it because it wasn't something I was looking to scale. It was I was in a position that the deals fell in my lap, and I was gonna go ahead and wrap them. Yeah. But all the legwork to put into them, bro, it, it was a lot. So I like I told myself real quickly, I was like, I'm not in a position where I need cash flow. I have a lot of cash flow coming in through all my businesses. I'm in a position where I need to acquire more real estate. So it's really taking time and energy and focus from the things I really wanted to pour into. Remember too, if they 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 refinance in five years, that's gone. You're no longer getting paid on that deal. Yeah, yeah. You're saying yeah, it's going to be way too much, right? They're yeah, not going like, to be able. So the market, right, right, right. First right, to right, right. Yeah, first right refusal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Every state's a little bit different when it comes to like legalities on these wraps. So just know the laws for your local market, you know. But it sounds like everything he's doing could be pretty. It's legit, yeah. you know. So, but yeah, definitely go the RML RMLO route if you're going to scale. Hey Matt. Let's get it kicked off. Let's yeah, get I mean, kicked off. All right, thank you everybody for being here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and kick the Q&A session off. I haven't got a chance let's to- Let's do a kumbaya, yet. let's do a kumbaya real everybody quick. Everybody in real quick. I'm gonna do a real, a real quick poll here. How many of you are in sub two? Sub two, sub two. Sub two. Yeah, you better not raise your hand. How many of you are in Gator? I'm just kidding. How, where are my Gators at? Gator. Well, one, one two. two. Okay, okay. Five. All right, okay. So I think one, we got what, two more than Almost. last time? Yeah. And okay. how many uh, TC? How many are here for the TC? TC. 
TC. Represent the TC crew. Hold that hand high. Hold that hand high. Hold that hand high. All right. So obviously we know we have to uh, try to get more of each of our community here um, when they can make it. A lot of the reason why we did this is because me and Javier, we connected through uh, sub two uh, event. I'm a gator, he's sub two, and we found out we kind of need each other, right? He gets creative deals, I fund deals creatively, and but then we also need TCs because I don't want to do any of the paperwork. He doesn't want to do any of the paperwork, right? So using TCs on deals is not only help from the paperwork standpoint, but it's also help from a, a, a safety standpoint, making sure you're getting the good deals and stuff. So why not bring everybody together so everybody can meet people locally so when you have questions or you need help in different realms, whether you're a wholesaler tracking deals down, but now you need to get some funding, do you have relationships built with Gators, right? And, and TCs to help you with the paperwork. So thank you all for being here tonight. We do have our guest speakers that are gonna talk a little bit about PathSplit. They're gonna do just a couple minutes of kind of what it is, what they do, um, and hopefully the future of PathSplit here in Orlando. And then we'll open it up for a few Q&A uh, Q uh, questions for them if you have any about PathSplit. Now is the time to ask. Uh, we've got Ray and Oriana. They're senior senior executives. I always forget we, it. We mess this up every time. Every senior time. national senior national, national account time. executives. It's too long. Yeah, yeah, it's too long. Yeah, um, yeah whatever. Like, we they, got they, awesome. like if you're getting into the path split model, anything you need to know about path split, these are two people that you want to connect with and network with. Um, Ray has been an amazing uh, relationship that I met through Javier. And anytime I've had a question and I've asked Ray, he's been quick to response and really made things clear. So uh, make sure you ask the questions you have and anything around PathSplit tonight. I'm gonna open the floor for Javier. Yeah, to... real quick, who, who all knows about PathSplit here? I know you just doing everybody pretty much. You guys know about PathSplit? No? PathSplit? No? Yeah, you, they're, they're getting one going actually. So, I want, yeah, good to hear. So they're launching one, they're from Miami, right? They're, they're up here from Miami, they're launching a, it's gonna be an eight bed, right? Eight bed? Actually, let's make it a 10 bed. Uh, we're, they're going to launch a uh, 10 bedroom pad split here in Orlando, so that's awesome. They're from Miami. I want to say really quick, uh, Rock Pit Brewing is the location we're going to be meeting at until we outgrow this place last Wednesday every month. Just like he said, if you know someone from top tier, Gator, spread the word. South Florida, if you guys know anybody who's coming up for Summit, remember, that's going to be really big. We, we're going to have a nice turnout for Summit. So for Summit, we're going to be doing a meetup around uh, Summit time as well. Last Wednesday every month. Buy a beer from them. Like They let us do this totally for free, so we like to support them. Really cool owners that, uh, that uh, own this place. So, uh, But no, we just want to have everybody connect. Who was all here last, last meetup? You guys were. No, who was here last meetup? In January, our January meetup. Who was here for January? January? Did, we have Did you guys get to connect with anybody? I'm just curious. Did you guys get you got to connect with some people? So the whole point of this, guys, we don't want you guys just to see me talk or see them talk. We want you guys to connect, do deals. Beckham does a lot of, lot of, you know, wholesaling. You know, he doesn't ever want to sell me a deal, but that's okay. He does a lot of wholesaling. Yeah, a lot of wholesaling. You know, he's doing a lot of flipping. Andreas is doing a lot of, a lot of deals. They're down from South Florida. He's got 40 homes that he wants to do seller financing on. So the whole point is, the whole point is to connect with each other. Right? We don't want us to just sit here, have a beer, get your number, or whatever. Like, connect. We want to make sure you guys are connecting. I know you're in Gator, so we want to do this for you guys to continue to keep growing this. So if you guys know anybody who is in one of the three communities, invite them out. Let's, let's keep collaborating. Let's keep, you know, shaking hands, do deals together, whatever. I mean, this whole thing is for you guys to get more value. So and it's not even just the paperwork side. They have guys who need to sell deals. They have front lines of people who have capital. Don't sleep on the TCs, I'm telling you right now. I know their community is not as big as Sub2 and Gator, but I'm telling you right now, these people are front lines of all deals. Yeah, so and so they have, have a lot of, they have a lot of resources. I was going to say, if you don't have a local TC you don't know, then guess what? Now Ella. you do. So before you leave, you yeah. should have her contact info and bring her in she, on your deals so she, she can keep you safe, yeah. but also help you dispo deals. So I'm going to hand it off to you guys. Yeah, they're going to just be talking about PathSplit. I know this is going to be really informative for you guys because they're they're new in the PathSplit and they want to learn more about it. So PathSplit is a, is a platform, just like you know, Airbnb, VRBO, and HomeAway are also platforms. And what we're doing is really creating a solution because there is really not a lot of affordable housing. 
We have a shortage of housing available nationwide and Proudsmith is creating a solution for those same reasons. So what we're actually offering investors is higher returns on their investments with them maximizing their spaces and their houses by converting common spaces like your living room, your dining room, potentially you have an office space already converted or even a garage that's already in your property. So many conversions already in Florida and we're renting by the room, right? So we're catering towards individuals that potentially work here actually at Rock Pit. Uh, they cannot qualify to rent or buy because they're requiring three times that income for either one, renting or buying, but they're completely being misplaced of that bracket of paying that, right? So let's talk Orlando numbers. A medium income is about $37,000 for the year. And for you to qualify for a studio that's average on $1,800, you need to make about $72,000 a year. So you're being completely disqualified because how can I provide that income, right, if I am just doing minimum wage? Right? So Passport is actually providing those individuals those options and alternatives so they can actually rent. Right? And the investor is profiting 2x, 3x, 4x on their income by renting by the room. We are in, eight, in 19 cities nationwide. Uh, Mark Cuban Citibank also invested in our company. So it also gives you an understanding of we have visionaries behind us as well supporting our growth. Mark Cuban. It's pretty cool. What else do we do? So when we actually get your rooms active on the platform, we're doing the marketing, the screening for the people as well. So we're gonna make sure that they're trustworthy. We're gonna make sure that they can actually financially afford to pay. We only disqualify if you have an eviction in the past seven years. We do not disqualify based on credit score. So maybe you already thought of somebody that can benefit from this on the member side, but maybe when you're actually analyzing deals now moving forward, you're gonna be able to analyze a lot more deals because a lot of deals that didn't make sense before, now the numbers are actually penciling in when you're underwriting something new, which is really exciting. We actually are operators just like Javi and Andres also, and we have 47 doors that we have acquired in a period of six months, I believe. So we were able to scale very quickly and our properties are generating us a monthly about $32,000 a month and we're netting about like fifteen or seventeen thousand dollars a month. So it's a very, very solid cash flow investment that we're producing a month with every single one of our properties. But I know you want to expand a little bit on that. So you can talk about our portfolio a little bit more. To to give a little background on us, uh, it is to say that we don't come from wealth. Uh, we actually started off nine years ago, ten years ago, wholesaling. And ironically enough, we started wholesaling with both of these guys. And so we actually didn't start to see any money until the tail end of our wholesale operation in which we decided, hey, instead of being transactional, let's keep some of this money, let's grow a portfolio, and let's build this out so that we can have something that we generate per month. And so we've actually done burr with our properties. Uh, we're, we're not creative. We're not a part of the sub two community. We're gonna change that very soon uh, because obviously the, the velocity in which you guys can find a property, create that transaction, be the bank and then scale up is fantastic but we've gone the hard route and we're here to obviously give you some answers on how we've gone the hard route uh, buying the property putting 10 percent down rehabbing it refining it and then putting it into a dscr loan and then putting the rooms in there and so our process has been hard so that your process could be easy and we're hoping to obviously not just be local reps for you, but we're national reps for the company. And we're here to give you the best advice that obviously anybody can get uh, within whatever market. So I'd like to leave it open so that you guys can ask questions, whether on acquisitions, dispositions, uh, our portfolio, and what they're generating per market. Um, we want to be as much value to you as possible and not just grandstand up here. Yeah, and we were ready like learned so much like we started with the first idea of what a path split would look like and then as we became operators it changed very quickly as well so we have tons of learnings also but do you guys have any questions great question so we probably won't find pad split because we're not searching for room rentals so the same way that if i'm going on a ski trip and i look for skis now on facebook i'm finding skis on google i'm finding skis everywhere i go i find skis Pad split spending half a million dollars on marketing um, on yeah, a month. A month? A month. Wow. On Google advertisements and social media advertisements so that whenever you search room rentals, 
we're popping up the first on the list. Like if you maybe do a Google search now and you do room rentals, Patsman might be the first one to come up on the list right now. So people are staying generally around eight to 10 months. It depends on the city and the zip code. Obviously jobs a huge factor in that. So when you're talking about Disney employees, for example, uh, we're talking about Kissimmee, Osceola, parts of Orange County. Uh, those people stay in that job for a very long time. They're not quitting their jobs. And because they're staying for a very long time, guess what? They're not getting raises as often. We hear about that in the news all the time, uh, negotiations and stuff. And so those people will stay in that pad split a lot longer because guess what? There's not that many options in Osceola. There's not that many options in Kissimmee for them. And so job is a factor. If the closest job to your pad split is a 7-Eleven, how long did you stay in your 7-Eleven job or your McDonald's job? I stayed at my McDonald's job for a month and a half. I would be a horrible pad split member. And so a large factor is what type of jobs are in your area. For example, in our properties, we have a bus driver for Disney, right? So he's a stable member. We have two individuals that also work for Universal, a stable person as well. We also are hosting two individuals that work for a front desk at hotels around the area here in Orlando. In Jacksonville, we have a manager for a restaurant. It's actually a Hooters. Another more stable member, you know, as a manager, you're not just going to pick up and go and just easily quit. And we have construction workers. So a little bit of a lot of different backgrounds uh, is what we're seeing in our properties. And our biggest current demographics in the platform are 25 to 37 and 50 plus. And these two ranges are going to be ranges of like big life changes. You're either just getting into the professional space, getting uh, your feet wet, and then 50 plus, you're either empty nester, you actually maybe just went through a divorce, or you relocated, or veteran. So those are gonna be the biggest demographics that we're currently seeing in our platform right now. So they sign up for a month and a day, and then they're paying weekly afterwards, or bi-weekly. The reason why we do weekly and bi-weekly pickups of money, collection of money, is because we have a 92%, no, was it a 97%? 97% collection rate. And the reason, 97% collection rate. So we collect at a 97% because we're collecting when you get paid. If you get paid bi-weekly at your job, we collect bi-weekly from you. And so it doesn't give you the opportunity to go pay uh, someone else, go pay your car payment, go on a date with the girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever. And so Pat Split's doing that more frequently so that we don't miss payments and we can identify potential issues. Um, the other thing is that the long-term tenant thing, the 12 years, doesn't guarantee that they're staying that long. They can break it at any point. Um, with long-term buy and hold. So for pad splits, uh, there are some guards there to charge people if they do break it sooner. But majority of people, again, are saying eight to 10 months. I'll walk you through it. Yeah, yeah. So well, this is one of my favorite parts. So you are the investor, you're the landlord. You're going to come to pad split with your property modified and adjust it to standards. Then when you're ready, we're gonna vet the property, make sure virtually that it, it fits the pad split model. And then we're gonna go ahead and send you a lease. That lease is for one year. Patsplit is going to create an LLC. This is the LLC that I created as Patsplit, and that LLC will sign a one-year lease with you directly. This is your tenant. You're the landlord. The people that are being vetted by Patsplit are going to go ahead and be screened by Patsplit, and once they select your house and you're approved by the homeowner, then you're placed, that, that member will be placed underneath that LLC that Patsplit created as a member of that LLC. And so this person doesn't sign a lease, this person signs a membership agreement. So when you go to the gym, you have your payment dues, your membership dues, you have your membership rules, you have your payment schedule. If you miss any of those, you're getting kicked out the gym. Same thing with pad split. Uh, you, well, the, the, here's a bit though. If you don't pay on time, you break the rules and people complain about you and you're terminated off a of pad split, you can't jump back into another pad split. There's no other alternative for you. You're terminated out of the platform. So, so with a, you know, a regular eviction, right, with a regular property, that process is like, yep. I have an idea. What is that process? You have somebody that. So I'll tell you like the, the default. So the general default is miss two payments in a row, it's going to generate a balance higher than $300. So either you're going to hit a, a $300 plus or two payments in a row that you're going to miss, which is over $300. That's going to trigger something where it's going to terminate the member. 
then PadSplit will notify the host of the property, hey, this person is defaulting out the property. Uh, they're going to be terminated on this date. You have an option to talk to the person or your property manager can talk to the person to extend that payment. Let's say you don't want to extend, you just want the person out. Well then fine, person's terminated and then if you have to go through an eviction and the person doesn't want to leave, PadSplit finds vendors throughout every city that we go in to help assist the process of an eviction. And so those people are law offices that can do an eviction for a flat rate. The person in Florida could do it for $500 if your property manager can't do it for cheaper. And uh, essentially speaking, the process is easier because they don't have any leases. Since they don't have a lease, they're not tenants. The only reason you have to go through an eviction is because you just can't pick someone up and throw them at your house. There's tenancy rights and you have to go through that process legally to get someone out of your property. So evictions are ugly, of course, because it's still an eviction. But even in this space, having one eviction is still nicer because six other rooms are still bringing an income in your property versus a long term that your entire property is not generating anything for you. But six other rooms are still covering your overhead expenses, but you have one room down. So it's ugly, but it's way less ugly than just having a long term, you know, that's just completely not generating any income for your property yeah it is it is easier and we have noticed that the members actually end up leaving before you do an eviction so a lot of them just end up leaving regardless uh like in florida in the past three quarters we've only had three evictions and we've had over 2,000 units so like our eviction rate is very very little but it definitely can happen no, like personally, our portfolio in Florida, but the company were in Georgia, Texas, uh, Nevada, Phoenix, Virginia, Washington. Like we're in 19 cities nationwide. Yeah, we're everywhere. Mine is like tenant friendly states like California, New Jersey, New York. Baltimore and Philly are tenant friendly states. We and are in Philadelphia, yeah, that's right. Right now I'm talking to a seller who's actually uh, he tried to list the property last year, wasn't able to successfully sell it, and he moved out of the house and he actually started to do rental to coat. And you know, he has a eight dollar a month. Some tips. I'll give quick tips on like locations in Orlando or Central Florida uh, for pad splits. Very important thing, uh, characteristics of the house would be your bathroom count, because your bathroom counts would set limits to how many bedrooms you could put in. And so for every four bedrooms, you want to have one public bathroom. If by default you have only two bathrooms, then you can only get eight bedrooms out of it. If one of them is a master and you can't get a bathroom out of that, you're going to have to create a bathroom if you want to get more bedrooms out of it. Square footage isn't the most important thing because layout ultimately, layout and bathroom count determines what you can ultimately do with the house. So if you have a lot of bonus rooms, office space, Florida rooms. Views, like those are beautiful. Exactly. Uh, areas you want to buy in, high population, high density, a lot of different job sectors. So when we start to think like Semeron, uh, Semeron has the airport, Semeron has hospitality, air, also has retail and restaurants, So and you're close to a lot of public transit. So ideal. Winter Park, it depends. It's very expensive. There's a lot of HOAs. Uh, there's certain areas that I look into, uh, but Maitland, possibly Altamont's fantastic for pad split. Is great golden rod areas phenomenal you know apopka altamont when we're talking about south florida for example i'll tell you like fort lauderdale near the hard rock casino where you're near the airport but you're also near the beach line but you're also near shopping those people who work retail can't afford to live in any of these cities if you're paid 15 dollars an hour by default you have a roommate if you work at a Walmart, you have a roommate. If all those jobs where people stay longer and develop careers in, you need a roommate. And so those are job, those are areas that need our help, but also help keep our properties full at the very end of the day. I don't. I wouldn't put a limit. What would, what's your number? So yeah, we kind of always have different answers for this one. Square footage is not necessarily your biggest thing, but I would go as small as 1,200 all the way to like 2,200. Single family, multi-families are great. No mobile homes, no townhomes, right? So really your layout is way more important than your square footage. I'll give you an example. Our smallest personal property is 1,200 square feet, 1,100 square feet. I always get this one wrong. And we have six bedrooms. But we were able to maximize uh, an outdoor unit that we had 
that was like a storage unit, and we made that into a 1-1. One -one. So our main house has 5-2, and then outside is a 1-1. One -one. So it really is the layout, how you're able to maximize, but you don't need to do it by yourself. You have us. We can help you see the vision. Because we've seen so many homes, you don't need to create anything. Like, help us. Uh, help us help you, essentially. We can do this together, you know? Right. So there's going to be six people living in the house. They'll they'll complain so quick. But that's what Passport is for. And Passport will collect those ticket items and inform you through the platform. But you are responsible to doing cleaning, maintenance, repairs, and upkeep. Essentially, the same responsibilities that you have in the short-term rental space also apply to co-living. Exactly. And then you'll be able to take care of that yourself. And everything is going to be managed through the platform. But they'll, they'll, they'll let you know when something is wrong. You will find out very quickly. It's really going to depend on the room size, right? Like, we personally prefer queens size in our bedrooms because we understand that queen size actually increase the value of your rooms. But the minimum is a full. You can, you can also have king size, but kings actually invite more people. So even though kings also give you more value, we don't necessarily suggest king beds because I might feel like he might come. You know, nobody's gonna notice because we have a king size bed. Yes, you're gonna need a um, bed, nightstand, night lamp, you're going to need wall art, and if you don't have a closet because you converted a living room, then you need to have a armoire, a dresser, a something to supplement for the absence of the closet. 8 by 10 is the minimum square foot that we have. Now what we've quickly learned is that our 8 by 10 rooms are the rooms that have a lot turnover. So the 8 by 10 are the coziest rooms, and those are the ones that stay occupied the least. Because people find out that there's a 10 by 10 that's $10 more a week, and they'd rather move to the 10 by 10 that's $10 more. So you're going to notice that those 8 by 10 have the biggest turnover. So it's not, oh, it doesn't always pay to have more rooms, instead, spacious rooms. Yeah, you need two forms of egress. So a way into the room, and then a way out of the house in case of emergency. So a window or an exterior door. So a garage conversion, a side door and a garage could be utilized as that second egress if you converted that garage over. Uh, but in that case, I would probably put like a window in that. I'd put a window. Like ideally, you do want to make it somewhere where they consider it a home because tenure at the very, very end of the day is absolutely important. I don't want someone in my pad split for three months. I want someone in my pad split for 10 to 12 months. Uh, so that I can enjoy that occupancy and then when they graduate and go into some other property Fantastic. It gives me an opportunity to adjust for whatever the market rates are at that moment I don't want someone for two years three years. Are there people in pad splits for two years three years? Yeah, I see it in Atlanta all the time Florida's just two and a half three years old So we don't have data going back that far for people living in a pad split for three years What kind of uh, fees does pad split charge for these notifications administrative stuff? They're not managing the property officially, right? Um, so what kind of, walk, walk us through what that would look like, uh, the fees. So they're doing 90% of the process for you. It makes it basically, it makes it easier for you to be an operator without you being an operator. It's cool for us to say we're investors, but at the very end of the day, we are investors, we're not operators. I don't go to my house, I don't talk to my members. I don't do any of that. My property manager does my property management for a small flat fee. Uh, that's somewhere around $400. And so prop pad split for doing their 90% of the process, what they're going to go ahead and charge is your first 10 days as, as them doing the marketing and screening the people. And then after your first 10 days, then they're only charging 8% moving forward. And then everything else is all inclusive. Typically you see pad splits taking 8, once it's stabilized, taking 8% and then plus a property manager, whatever their fee is. Correct. So I'll give you a breakdown. And then the, the stupid math is like, consider 50 to 60% being your net. That's a stupid math. But um, my best property is generating $8,200 a month gross and I'm walking away with uh, $3,400 net. That's after mortgage, that's after property management, that's after utilities, that's after taxes. That's everything, I'm not hiding anything there. My other properties are somewhere around $1,800, $1,900 net. 
that's four times more than someone generates in their long-term buy and hold. And it's more consistent because I'm doing that through most of the year and I'm not seeing this in my short-term rentals. Like we do face seasonality, especially in the, like in the winter time because people are spending tons at Christmas. You know, they overspent at Christmas, so January is not necessarily the biggest spending month. But for the rest of the year, we definitely see very consistent occupancy. The HOA. It's almost like investor's choice with an HOA. Caveat emptor, right? And so Matthew was telling me about some, you know, a deal. Let him get into it, but is there any issues with zoning? Anything that you run into where somebody will come to your property and say, "Hey, it's not an HOA, yeah. right?" And for whatever reason, they'll flag it for a zoning issue. Um, I like the zoning is, question. Is, is that I didn't even know that was a thing uh, until he mentioned it with this situation. So. So zoning, the problem that we have with zoning is that we kind of get confused with short-term rentals. And so we don't stick out. My house, I show you my house, it looks like the same house it looked like before, but better because I fixed it. And so a neighbor might see that someone is moving in and out and it's, it's very transient. And that's because maybe, again, that investor didn't do a great job of keeping people longer. And so then the neighbor calls the city and says, hey, this property is an Airbnb. We don't want Airbnbs in our neighborhood. They don't know what Pat Split is. You don't know what Pat Split is. You don't know what Pat's, you barely know what Pat Split is. And so they're not running around saying, hey, we're trying to kick Pat Split out of our neighborhoods. They're trying to kick Airbnbs out of the neighborhoods. If you then don't do the appropriate permitting for your property to do the rehab, and that's electrical, that's popping a window on the side of your house, that's doing some sketchy stuff, then they're going to hit you for all of that stuff. They might try to hinge on the fact that there's multiple people staying in the house, but because they're not signing individual leases, they're only signing one lease with you and it's only one tenant. So the unrelated people renting from your house, you're not in violation of that, but the permits that you didn't pull for your rehab are in violation. And so whether you're savvy or not, or whether you pull permits or not, that's up to the investor and Patsville as a platform doesn't necessarily discriminate. We just tell you to go ahead and do what you need to do according to what your local, you know, code is. Do that, right? Check those boxes. And you do the lease, the, the standard lease with Pat Split, and then members join that LLC. There's really nothing against those zoning regulations. There's no direct violation to zoning regulations because zoning at the very end of the day will tell you, you can have four unrelated people and 16 helpers. Sure. So you're not changing the zoning of your house. So zoning and code are two different things, right? So if your property is R1, R2, R3, you're still operating as that. For you to operate a co-living property, you are not required to change your zoning, okay? So you're still operating under whatever your designated zoning is for your property. But when it comes to code, there is limitations on how many unrelated people can live in a house, okay? And this is the reason why we have that master lease. Because unfortunately our code essentially states that you can still have helpers, which is slaves, because it hasn't been updated since like forever. And it's not Orlando, it's like nationwide. So this is how we're able to get through kind of the legislation that's in place where you're still able to have more than five unrelated people in your house and it's still within code. Of yeah. course. That's what we're here for. We love this and obviously when we finish, if anybody has any questions, uh, obviously Andres and Javi have information on their process and what they've done. Uh, beautiful properties and then obviously us as Pat Split reps, we've gone through this process and we're not just giving you information that we learned in textbook. We've failed and then we've learned and we've grown and then obviously educated a massive amount of investors. You're talking about number two on uh, the amount of volume of people that are being onboarded and number three in the company. And together we're helping the most amount of investors in the company across the whole country. And like I feel like we're, we're rebranding the word affordable. It's like affordable looks so different in every, in every single city, right? But it almost feels like eggs are not even affordable, right? Uh, so we're rebranding this and it's more like workforce housing because all those people are just not getting a wage increase. They're still taxpayers, they're still contributing to the community, but they have really nowhere to actually qualify for it. So it, it is a do good, feel good strategy for sure. So you have full control on your pricing? 
just like you would in short-term rental or in long-term rental. So you have full control on your pricing. We will guide you on pricing, right? Uh, but ultimately, you decide what you want to list your properties for. Like Javi likes to go for a better member quality, so he's going for a higher target member, and that's his strategy, and it's working out for him, right? But there's going to be a, a discrepancy of like what's unrealistic because... There's still going to be people that if Javi rents his room for 500, let's say, they can probably rent that somewhere else, right? They can probably afford to rent your studio. So it's still having value to your members that it's going to guarantee you to get your properties occupied. But you have full control in your pricing. Because if your grass needs to be cut and the city drives around your neighborhood to see if it reaches this high, Pat Split's not going to do that and I'm for sure not driving to Jacksonville to cut my grass. So my property manager handles the physical asset so that we can sit here and talk to you guys and I don't have to go ahead and do the physical part of that. So like the leaky faucets, the grass growing, the door doesn't open because the battery died. The cleaning. The cleaning in the common areas, if you want additional cleaning, it's optional for you. Those are all things that you might not want to do and I definitely don't want to do. So property management would be that in between that extra help. Yeah, operationally it sucks. And the reason why operationally it sucks is for safety and logistically, you're gonna have to replace the lock anyway. And so I move in the house, I'm shifty. I'm very weird, you don't want me, I leave. I have a key to that. People recognize me, they let me back in. I open the door, I steal something. Now you have to change the lock again. That's a locksmith. You do a Wi-Fi lock, you change the lock. Wi-Fi locks or punch code. Yeah, it's a requirement. So it's the requ punch code or The requirement is a punch code or a Wi-Fi lock. So traditional key is not allowed. Home people tomorrow. <laughs> That's why it's very important before you... So what we like to teach is before you ever get to the point where you're buying these locks already, and you fumbled in this part of the process, I already told you before you bought the house, these are what your requirements are, and you should look at this so that when you modify your property, this is how you make more money on it, and this is what you should anticipate in these parts of the process. That's why Javi's giving you that checklist. Yeah. So you know what you need to buy. If you're finding out now, you're misguided probably. A couple things, so I run my operations a little bit differently than he does, so they actually have a property manager uh, for probably a good bulk of their properties. I actually have three VAs uh, out of Pakistan that I pay $120 a week, 120 a week. I got them off of Upwork. And so they do all my customer service side of things, right? My cleaner is my boots on the ground. My lawn mown every, every, every month, they know when to come, right? So really the ongoing management, there's not a whole bunch. So me personally, I didn't really see a value as paying somebody $400 a month. Right, when I can have my VAs do all that customer service stuff. Hey, there's a ticket, the toilet's not working, they can, hit, they can reach out to my plumber, right? Because we have the whole list. We have uh, SOPs in, in, in place, right? So if you have the right SOPs in place and you get the right VA, you can really run a good operation for very low cost, right? Instead of paying three to $400 for a property manager per property. So like when he referred to property managers, I, I didn't really see a whole bunch of value from me, me personally. I knew that I can just get my VAs in place and then um, have my cleaner, which is my boots on the ground. I train my cleaner. Does it smell like smoke? Um, do they have extra guests over? Like they're trained, like you train your cleaner. They're in that property more than anybody else. They're in there, you know, twice a month. Like for me, I have them in there twice a month, bi-weekly. So they know to send me pictures before and after. They know to, to let me know if there's smoke smells. They, let, they know to let me know if they see that there's extra cars at the property. Not only that, I have a ring camera system at every property. So we can monitor our properties remotely to see if people are acting up and stuff like that. That's the very first thing I do because I also want to manage my contractors. Are they showing up when I'm doing the rehab, right? Am I going to use them again? Are they drinking beer on the job site? Are they, are they smoking weed, whatever? Like ring cameras are like the first thing you do at all angles. I even put one in the house until the rehab is done and then I take that out of the house, right? So I run my operations a little bit differently and that might make you guys also a little bit, that NOI will increase as well. Yeah, just train them, put some SOPs in place and then get them dialed in and I'm telling you, there's not really a whole bunch of ongoing management, you know, uh, that need in place. So your lawn, they'll come every month, whenever, you know. Check your cameras to see if they came and did the lawn, right? Just like how he does, yeah. we're talking about 300 plus units with us, 55 properties, and they do it just like Javi, and it works. So it's not a requirement, it's, it's your choice. Whatever's more cost efficient for you.
Oh, you can't have visitors. You can't have visitors. That's there, a that's a membership in violation. You know? yeah. yeah, there's rules. No, there's so there's house rules that you can create as like custom rules, but then there's also uh, membership rules. Membership rules. Don't leave dishes. Yeah. And there's a cute weird thing that I like. I just learned. I, I didn't know this. Do you do different plates for different rooms? So that you can tell the color, and so you can tell who left the dishes. Yeah, there's the cabinets, and number the cabinets, but if you do different color plates, then you can tell who it is because they're not supposed to leave plates out. You have to clean after yourself. What the color plates does is like, let's say Javi complains that I don't do the dishes, but his color is green and mine is pink, and there's green. Javi, busted, like you can't say it's me, you know? It's like things like that, that it makes your operation so much easier and just smarter. It can't be like, you know, Spider-Man spanking at each other, like the evidence is very clear. It's right there. Originally, yeah. I'll give you, no, I'll give you the original answer. Three years ago when we were yeah. just basic, basic pad splits and it was like no flare and the beds were just all metal beds. It was absolutely no don't have because it, um, it just costs extra money. It's a li it's a liability. It could be destroyed. And so you'd put a cap there to kind of block it off. Nowadays, there's a lot of people doing different things. You could charge a little extra for it. It's up to you at the very end of the day. It's a personal decision because mini fridges isn't a requirement, but some people put mini fridges in rooms. Some people put TVs in rooms. Some people put desk in rooms. Some items are items that could make you more money and some items are just visually appealing that could get you better members. It's a common thing already, and I wouldn't discriminate against the swimming pool, and there's already active pad splits with swimming pools, so it's just your level of liability and what you're comfortable with, because ultimately it is a liability, and depends on the neighborhood, because if I, if my people have three jobs each and it's $160 a week, I probably don't want a pool in that neighborhood or in that house. But if my house is now something that's in like Winter Park, and it's something that's common, and is a better paying job, and I think it's an extra amenity that would bring me extra income that a person can be able to afford, then I would see it as something that I would do. All right, guys, so we're gonna wrap it up. Does anybody have two more questions we can take on pad split? I think once every six months, once right? Once every six months, yeah, like once, $10. Yeah, if they've been living with you, like let's say they've been there for six months or seven months, whatever, they've been living in that, you can only raise it one time. But if they move out and say, hey, oh, I don't like this place, you can raise that room rent right away. Right. They have to be in there for a 90 day period, I believe it is. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, the, the minimum commitment is 31 days. After that, it's week to week. They can pick if they want to pay weekly or do they want to pay bi-weekly. Right? So it's just an initial three minutes. But they can break that initial commitment for a fee. Yeah, and then real quick tip I want to give you guys because you guys are just getting yours going. Make sure the walls that you're putting up, make sure you soundproof them as well. Right? So a lot of my walls that I put up, I soundproof all those walls because remember, you don't want the guy next door playing YouTube at three in the morning for the other guy and, and you know, room two to hear, you know, the, exactly. So what ends up happening is they, it, it escalates up to you, them complaining. And then in reality, what ends up happening is they want to move out. So now that affects your occupancy rate. And if it affects your occupancy rate, that's going to mess up your NOI. Right? So the key is you're always thinking of a longevity on anything you do. No, no. So technically the proper way to do it. So when you run st uh, studs, they're every 16 inches. And so if a contractor knows how to make a soundproof legitimate wall, they'll stagger the studs. That way the drywall is not touching, the, the drywalls on each side is not t uh, sharing the same studs. Not only that, you put soundproof insulation and then around the outlets, they make it, there's a soundproof fitting that goes around the outlets as well. So if you do it properly, that's the way to do it. Right. So tell them to stagger the, 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 the uh, studs, right? You don't want them sharing the same drywall. I mean, it's the same space, it's just, so when you put, when you have two different rooms, the way drywall works, they share the same exact stud. So when noise travels, right? And so what happens is you can hear a lot easier. And when you don't have anything in between those walls, not only are they sharing the same exact studs, there's no insulation or anything for soundproofing. So what ends up happening is you can hear that member very easily. When you do a soundproof wall, they don't share the same exact studs. They stagger them. So there's, here's a stud, here's a stud, here's a stud, here's a stud. See what I'm saying? Instead of it being like this, stud, 16 inches, stud, 16 inches, stud. You see what I'm saying? And then two pieces of drywall. Does that make sense? There's more, uh, I, I believe there's more studs, but they're staggered instead of being in a straight line and they're not sharing the same piece. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, you, I use soundproof insulation around the outlets is another place where noise can travel through. And then you, there's little fittings that uh, uh, they sell for outlets that goes into the outlet box and it's like a cover. No, it's not sprayed in. No, it's a roll. 
It's a roll. Hey guys, guess what? If you're watching this video, that means you're not here. And guess this week, we had two guest speakers, the account national executives of PadSplit, and you guys missed out. And I wanna see you guys here at the last Wednesday of every single month. We're gonna have a sub two top tier TC and Gator meetup. And I wanna see you guys here. Ray, Oriana, tell us a little bit about what happened today. Share with everybody how to get your money's worth. And listen, you missed out. Javi has so much knowledge, we have so much knowledge. You gotta be here. Awesome, listen guys. Remember, if you're watching this, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Real Javier Paredes. Don't forget, I wanna see you on the next side.